Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Sorry I haven't done StarCraft in a while. Been preoccupied with Fallout 3, which has been taking up a lot of time actually. I've been having problems with Fraps losing game files for whatever reason. I'm not sure if it's my SSD or Fraps itself. 6 o'clock location, we have Dignitas Show starting as the Red Terran 9 o'clock location. We have July Zerg as the Blue Zerg. This is actually all the way back from MLG. And at the pace of StarCraft 2, it feels like this is an eon ago, even though I think it was like a week and a half ago, two weeks. Um, yeah, and I was at NASL. Thank you, everybody who watched and participated in that. Also, I have an NASL party bus gathering together. Look at the Team Liquid community site. If you're in Southern California, please join us for that. The more people we get, the cheaper it gets. And it'll probably, I assume, be around the $25 range once we hit it. And if you get on the party bus, tickets to the NASL finals are for free. So I think it's actually a cheap, it's even cheaper than gas, actually. I think when you add it all up, unless you're carpooling with other people, but I think this is a much more entertaining way to carpool. Uh, enough announcements. July Zerg scouting show first, and I do not believe he revealed his position show building at Supply Depot alongside. I think I might have commentated these games out of order, unfortunately. So I don't know who, so if July Zerg wins this, I apologize. And the third game will be spoiled. Um, but uh, I guess I'll recant and whatever. It'll be StarCraft, and it'll be fun. I think the MLG, most of the, the standings have been mostly, so we'll just enjoy this game for what it is. 12 pool, or sorry, 15 pool from Julyzerg, going back to Brood War style, which, if you're not familiar with Julyzerg, he was a Brood War legend. In fact, Moltrap was joking when he met up with Julyzerg, he was just kind of chatting with him, and he was like, oh, hey, I'm a Brood War commentator and a big fan of yours, and Julyzerg was like, I Brood War, uh, Brood War legend. And he was like, I kid, I kid. And Moltrep was like, no, you, you really don't kid. You really are a Brood War legend. That is, in fact, the case. It is awesome to see him doing so well in StarCraft 2, following up with an extractor and a spawning pool simultaneously uh, as soon as he planted that fast expansion build. Or a fast expansion, I should just say. Show planning two barracks on his front door. It looks like he's going to go for that information denial, heavy pressure style. It looks like he is going to have that Marine sneaking out. And I love the Overlord placement from Julyzerg, just hovering over that mass. He can, in fact, see this SCV as well as additional troops incoming. He should be able to react perfectly, in theory. So should have really good information about the numbers of Marines coming out. It's going to come down to micromanagement now and reaction. Three Marines, as soon as that third Marine joins. Actually, no, never mind. The two going to drag out a little bit early. Show moving out. He's already got a bunker. It looks like a drone is trying to harass. More drones coming off the line. This is going to delay Jalizerg's mining time. But at the very least, he should be able to take this bunker down. But the SCV is still there. That could cancel. And we could see Show get those minerals back and make another attempt at this. Nevertheless, more Marines coming up. Keep in mind, Jalizerg seeing all of that off that Overlord. So he knows that numbers are, in fact, incoming. I should bring up. And you see six Zerglings already in production. The Zerglings actually already flooding down. Another bunker attempting to be built. Show having to already deal with heavy numbers and speed on the way. Jalizerg. Wow, nice mic management. Show already three Zerglings down. Looks like he might. Yeah, gets a fourth one. Now just two left. And he is able to clean that attack up nicely. Still more Marines flooding forward. SCV should be killed right there, and it looks like Jalizerk has repelled this attack, and on top of that, he has a nice counterattack option. Show needs to get back up to the high ground. He has been stunted. Going to try to settle for a fast expansion, but in the meantime, Jalizerk settling to his mid-game mass style. Going to get eight Zerglings in addition to the amount of Zerglings here. I think it's 44 out there, so 15, 14, 14 Zerglings, 15? I'm not sure why that count's fluctuating. I think we, oh, I guess one died, that's why. Yes, that would detriment the count of Zerglings out in the field. In the meantime, though, he's in a fantastic economic position. He's following it up with a baneling nest, perhaps thinking about a bust. This is the thing with Jalizerk. He's so strong in these situations because he builds all these Zerglings, and you never know with speed. You never know, okay, is he going to go for a bust? Is he just going for map control? And he's, is he going to expand twice behind this? And that is the power of this early information deni denial style. It is First of all, you, you're you safe at this stage, so it gives you some comfort level. And on top of that, you can depict the pace of play. Show, once again, moving out with a large group of Marines. Keep in mind, Speed Zerglings alongside, and Jalizerk still has plenty of map information with that Overlord. And this is such a brilliant Overlord. It is catching all of this. It's going to see these sneaky Marines gathering up along the low ground. It doesn't look like Show, in fact, sees that Overlord up on the high ground. Yeah, he has no vision of it, so he has no idea he's been spotted or that he's in a huge amount of trouble as these Zerglings dive forward as a large group. Get the surround! Jalizerk assassinating every single one of those Marines without much of a fight. Now Show in huge trouble. Has to get a bunker up. 
Actually might want to get a second bunker on top of this. It looks like he is in fact producing a second bunker. And Bane links have 40 more on the front door. Diving in. Front door of Breach. Show backing up with the few Marines he has. There's SCVs off the line as well. He is lucky that he didn't need a Bane link blast right there. The mule actually uh, didn't. I'm sure. I'm wondering what happened to that Bane link actually. It looks like it exploded a little bit prematurely. But it does not matter. Digintosh shows base has in fact been breached. Show not in the best position here. And more Zerglings flooding forward. To shoot this gap. Not a lot of Marines. At least he's safe for the moment. But here's the thing. Jalizer can just pump drones in the meantime. He's been playing very low economy at this stage. Which happens when you're going for Bane lane busts like such. Uh, Sho might want to switch these Harvesters off gas momentarily. Because he needs some additional minerals to get some of those SCVs out. As well as some of these, uh, well, Marines or whatnot. But this is what I was talking about. Jalizer going to expand once again to his gold expansion. He could actually expand twice if he felt like it. Because he doesn't have to worry about Sho for quite some time. And honestly, Sho in a very difficult situation is continuing to pad his front door, still worrying about mainling busts. And this is the thing, he has zero information. And he can't expend a scanner sweep to figure it out. So he's got that bunker on the front, he's got a, a factory scooting back, and it looks like his option is going to be going dual starport to follow this up. Going to try to catch Jalizer, maybe go, I assume not Viking, but perhaps Medivac drop, doing some desperation measures, wants to try to play positional. He's like, okay, I think Jalizer is going to expand a lot behind this. If he does, I'm going to try to do some fancy drops to try to catch up in this match. That, match. that is his one option. On top of that, he could go Vikings and just try to take out as many overlords as possible, try to slow Jalizer down while he expands himself. Unfortunately, Jalizer still will hold the ground in that scenario, so it would be very difficult to press up and take territory, so he'd need some additional Marines as well as probably two, maybe even three bunkers with what even Jalizer has latently out there in the 18 Zerglings. Nevertheless, economically, it looks like show has stabilized a little bit. That is the power of mules. They can catch up very rapidly. We do have dual tech labs from show. So actually thinking about Banshee follow-up, perhaps. I'm going to assume Banshee at this stage, and he's going to try to catch Lyzerg in a, yeah, dual Banshee cloak upgrade should be incoming. And he's just going to try to assassinate as much as possible, hope that Lyzerg doesn't tech to any sort of anti-air defense. Currently, Jalizerg has nothing. It looks like he is, in fact, opening up that destructible rock in the upper left-hand corner. And he's building a second Baneling Nest. I am curious why he's doing that. I'm a little bit worried. So I think that was a huge mistake on his part. Even the pros make mistakes here and there. So getting a Roach Warren and, yeah, a second Baneling Nest, which he... I have no idea. That is just a gigantic mistake. Perhaps it's just a marathon level of play. Okay, they're canceling it, so he did, in fact, catch it. But this is going to be devastating. He's going Roach Warren. He has a handful of Queens out. But he has no anti-air to cope with the Banshees that are going to be incoming. So Sho does have an opportunity to sneak back in this match. If he picks off that Queen, can pick out a ton of drones, he's going to be in a fantastic situation. Queen most certainly going to die to both these Banshees. There's the Evolution Chamber going to be attempt to, to build in the meantime. But Sho might be able to catch up economically with just assassinating drones left and right. Buying himself some time. Zerglings going forward. They're trying to be fodder. He's basically showing as much as he can, but Jalizer's economy is going to be stymied in the meantime. On top of that, he's going to lose some queens, which is going to hurt him a lot. And nice micromanagement on those Banshees. Show has some breathing room. He still has to micro, and it looks like he's just going to camp over two expansions and really cut into this. Jalizer counterattacking. It looks like he's got an empty factory, but those are going to die. So Jalizer coming apart a little bit here, and we do have those two bunkers on the front door in the meantime. But Show doing a fantastic job of hurting Jalizer's economy immensely. Dropping him down actually to, to 30, well, 35, 34. Still economically behind and still doesn't have a... Unfortunately, despite all this, a bunch of bases up. But Jalizer still hasn't teched any sort of anti-air aside from those spore colonies. And it still doesn't cover a lot of this territory. I think one of those Banshees might have died. No, it's still uh, wandering around someplace. It looks like, actually, never mind. It's trying to find it. Might be at the third base. It's hard to see the red on top of that creep on the mini-map for whatever reason. Anyway, Jalizer actually opening up the Destructible Rock on the bottom right-hand corner. For what purpose, I am unsure. Perhaps just to have that lower ground option in case... Because I guess he's figuring, okay, Show needs to expand once again behind this to really stay in this match. So let me go ahead and, ex and make sure he's going to be denied an expansion, or at least have to have ground troops to cope with it in the meantime. We do have a siege tank, and nice recovery from Show actually. I think he's right back in this match. His natural expansion up and running. Yeah, Jalizer preemptively just going to plant a Zergling there. 
and try to ride out this economy, pump some more, uh, pump some more Zerglings, pump some more drones, and try to stay in this match. Still some Roaches on the ground. The Banshees, actually four Banshees up in the air. They do not have the Cloak upgrade, but Banshees plus Siege Tanks versus nothing but Roaches and Zerglings, still a fantastic situation. Jalizerk still defiantly not going to Hydralisk, interestingly enough. So Zerglings going to die for free in open field. And now all of a sudden shows some air control, and Jalizerk playing a little bit sloppy for all of the, the praise I gave him. Third expansion, very vulnerable. That queen most certainly going to be taken out. Three Spork Ballers being morphed right there. Actually, four. Four Spork, uh, spork Ballers to try to repel this attack. But still, in the meantime, that's a drone cost. And in the meantime, Sho has taken the economic advantage. 42 to 38 Harvester count. Now that Banshee Nest is vulnerable. He might lose his Banshee Nest before some critical hooks. And most certainly going to lose his queen. Wow! Sho! has recovered in this match fantastically and is making a real game of it. Hopefully he can pick up that main lane nest before and ooh, more queens is getting taken out. Again, that's gonna slow Jalizer down as he cannot spawn Larva and utilize that three base economy. Okay, one Banshee down, but still this is gonna be close. Centrifugal hooks canceled and oh, wow, that almost looked like a giant ant right there when it kind of splurged out. I'm gonna say splurge because it's a very Zergy word. Command Center being built to take that third, but Sho has actually taken the supply lead, has some Metavax outs, has some Siege Tanks, and he is looking to push, and he actually might have a lot of success with this. 20 Zerglings and 5 Roaches versus 3 Banshees, a ton of Marines with some Metavax support, and 3 Siege Tanks that do in fact have Siege Check upgrade. So July Zerg all of a sudden in trouble at 3 bases, did not respond well to Sho's sudden tech switch, and show might sneak away with the match, moving up to that gold expansion. And the power of this is if he can siege up here and take this position, not only will he take out this gold expansion, he will have Jalizerg isolated to two bases. Wow. Show with a fantastic recovery in it. I'm going to call this game two, even though it's probably not. Roach is moving in. Looks like they're going to assassinate a lot of these Marines, but the Marines holding stalwart some... Ooh. Healing on the low ground. Zerglings diving in. The Roach is completely cleaned up between the Siege Tanks and the Banshees. And Jalizerg... Falls to show in game two to a, a fantastic recovery from Dignitas Show. A little bit of sloppy play on his part, but definitely got to give it to Show for recovering in this. And that is most certainly GG. Counterattack, handful of Zerglings, but Show right on top of it has the Sea Chinks and Marines to engage those Zerglings. I assume as soon as these are cleaned up, we will. Yeah, there's GG from July Zerg. Knows he's not going to win it there. Great play from Show in game two. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And going to hopefully be pumping out more content this week now that I am back from NASL. Thank you. Thanks again to everybody who watched. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.